All right, hello and welcome. Today I'm going to give a quick overview of the Zeiss Cantina, or at least this version of the Zeiss Cantina. Um, this particular camera came with a leather carrying case, which is still intact, although it is showing some wear right here. I'm concerned that's going to split off at some point, um, and that will be a problem because, even though this is just a lovely carrying case, this camera lacks strap lugs. So if you want to throw it around your neck, you gotta find, you gotta find an original carrying case, basically. Um, so again, here we go. Here's this one is, it's in good shape, but oh, I hope that doesn't tear off. Okay, all right, so we're just gonna put this back here. All right, so this is a Zeiss Cantina. Um, it is the owner's manual refers to it as a Zeiss Cantina 2, that is a Roman numeral 2. And some collectors, I believe, refer to this version as the 2A, um, a lowercase a following the Roman numeral 2, I think. The um, nomenclature for the Zeiss Cantina line is confusing. Uh, there were you know, at least a dozen different camera models produced in the 1950s and 1960s called Cantina by Zeiss Icon. Uh, for example, this one simply says Cantina. It doesn't say Cantina 2, doesn't say Cantina 2A, it just says Cantina on it. Uh, and there were, were quite a few cameras like that. Uh, they shared a certain, I mean, they were entry level cameras for the Zeiss Icon company. Uh, they do all share certain characteristics. I'm pretty sure they all use a Prontor shutter. Prontor was a name brand, uh, name brand of, a, um, of a leaf shutter manufactured by the Gautier company. I think I'm saying that right. Um, very popular um, leaf shutter of the 1950s, 1960s, used in quite a few compact um, rangefinder or viewfinder cameras of the period. Um, so I think most of the Zeiss Cantinas used the Prontor shutter. Um, I, th they, I think they all had three element lenses and they were used viewfinder focusing. Um, I mean, it's possible that one that one of those models had a four element lens or, or I think one, one model may have had a, a, a range finder, but by and large, um, the Cantina line was a simple introductory entry level camera using um, a three element lens, Prontor shutter, viewfinder focusing. Um, and, but other than that, they, they did very considerably. So if your Cantina looks, looks different than this one, uh, don't panic. Um, it's, uh, it just means you, you have a different model and what I say may or may not apply to your camera. So let's just go over some of the features of this camera um, and point out what it, you know, what they, what it does. Um, first thing I want to point out is the, um, the light meter dial. This here is the light meter. Um, this dial and this window constitute the light meter display. And um, on one version of this camera, there is a cutout around this rim which displays a set of green numerals um, and that was for a version of this camera which I think immediately preceded this one and it contained a dual zone light meter that is a light meter that um, uh, that functioned that had two separate functions one for um, bright light one for low light and that particular uh, model had a cover on it that you see this right here is a this is the um, um, the sensor for the light meter and in order to open it up you just push right here and here just flips open um, and this now permits light into the selenium light uh, sensor so these old light meters made out of selenium did not require batteries that's an advantage the disadvantage is they weren't particularly good in low light and once the selenium was used up, that is eventually, I mean, if you, if you leave this thing sitting out in the light, the, um, the selenium reservoir, the selenium um, will, uh, will exhaust itself. And at that point, you've got a dead light meter and there's nothing you can do to bring it back. Uh, perhaps maybe, you know, decades ago, there were people who could revive those old selenium meters, but not anymore. Um, at any rate, with this one, you'll notice that the flap um, contains this little indentation, but this indentation is, is purely decorative. Um, on the other version, which I mentioned, there, there is a version of this camera which has two holes right here, 
um, and the holes will, you know, obviously restrict the amount of light, you know, getting back to the sensor. Um, but that was for the bright light metering, and then you flipped it open for low light metering, and there were two different zones um, on top of the uh, on top of the meter. So um, the light meter on this camera works well. It <laughs> it works, but it's a little uh, um, well. You set your ASA by turning this here. Oops, excuse me, not that, this. So this little protuberant, protruding thing right there, that little, um, you grip that with your fingernail, um, and then you turn it to adjust the ASA. The highest ASA setting on this camera is, well, 650. Um, set it to 320, okay, fine. We open up the, uh, um, the cover, and you can see when I open the cover, the, the needle moved right here. Open the cover, and needle moves. You then move this so that it matches the needle, and that points to that little red pointer points to a, a number, number 11. And then you then look for that number 11 right here on this part of the camera here. You see these orange numbers? You find number 11, and then you want to turn that red pointer so that it's at number 11. Um, and here we go. Now it's at number 11, and the camera is set to exposure value 11, which is going to give you exposure times of, let's see, 125 and f4, 16 and f6, 30 and f8. Okay. Um, and that's essentially how the light meter works. Okay, over here you've got an accessory shoe, uh, which you could, you could mount a flash, although I'm you know, I, I personally don't use flash with these old cameras, but you could. Um, you could also mount a, a um, an accessory light meter if yours isn't working. Uh, if you have a, I mean, these cameras are you know, 60 plus years old, so um, uh, uh, don't don't be surprised if your light meter is not working properly. It's no big deal. Um, if, if frankly, if it if you get one of these and the light meter does work, consider it a bonus. That's that's, that's my advice. Um, Accessory shoe, here's your rewind knob. You notice that there's an arrow right here, which is going to, when I turn that arrow like so, watch what happens. It lifts up. Let's do that again. Like so. On this camera, where you turn the knob, it lifts up just like so. And then now it will allow you to rewind the film. Um, there, that's a neat little trick. Over here, we've got the shutter release mechanism and the um, uh, frame counter and the advanced lever all right here. So the advanced lever works just like it does in uh, most cameras of this era. There you go. Um, the shutter release button is right here, so that you simply depress that and it releases the shutter. Um, this also has a fitting for a standard cable release. So if you have a standard cable release, you can fit that into the, here we go, you fit that into the um, shutter release like so, wind on, and there, okay, release the shutter. Um, on the back of the camera, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second, the, uh, the frame counter. So, in addition, this is um, this functions as the frame counter, and you've got this little this little circle of what feels like Bakelite type plastic, I think, um, and it goes around like so. It does not, it will not reverse. So if you if you overshoot, you got to go around again. Um, when you load film on this camera, you have to reset the frame counter to zero. So I do that there. Frame counter is now reset to zero. You see a little white mark opposite the zero. So now the frame counter is reset and ready to ready to go forward. Um, on the back of the camera, you don't have much except the eyepiece. Uh, you look through the viewfinder and you, you see well, you see the world. You don't see much else. You, you know, there, there's no uh, no no frame lines, no light meter, just a very simple um, uh, viewfinder. Um, in order to open up the back of the camera, you pull down on this latch. This latch right here is the way, is how you open up the back of the camera. 
Okay. Um, and you can see here, you've got the, uh, the space where you put the film. Again, and I'm gonna raise this up, okay? And now I can pull this out of the way in order to insert the film. And then once the film's back in, I'm gonna put this back down because those two teeth there are going to mate with um, um, the film canister in order to, uh, in order to rotate it, or uh, in order to, uh, to rewind it, actually. So that you pull the film across here, put the leader in, um, in this slit right here. I've done a separate video on loading film into this camera where I demonstrate the film loading procedure. Uh, I recommend that you take a look at that. You take a look at the playlist uh, on the channel. Um, I've got a playlist called Loading Film, and that video will be amongst several others demonstrating how to load film into a variety of 35 millimeter cameras. Um, here is the, um, the shutter, and the, you can see the lens right there. And uh, that's what you got on the inside. This little um, gizmo here prevents the film from going back. And this is what is going to be released or disengaged when you press this button right here. So that button will disengage that, um, that mechanism which prevents the film from moving back. Once you reach the end of the roll, you press that down and rewind the film by raising this and continuing to just rewind the film. Um, I did a demonstration of uh, rewinding and removing film in my first impressions video that I did for this camera. So have a look at that uh, for a demonstration. Uh, let's take a look at the front of the camera. Um, on the front, well actually the rest, let's cover the bottoms since there's not much else down here. Uh, rewind button and this is the tripod mount, uh, tripod socket mount, uh, standard tripod. That's, that's, that goes right there and that's rewind button and that's all you've got on the bottom plate and that's it. Okay, so let's take a look at the, um, the front of the camera. You can see this has a Novar lens. Um, the Novar was a three element lens made by Zeiss for the Cantina line of cameras. Uh, fo focal length is 45 millimeters, uh, maximum aperture is 3.5. There was a faster lens, an optional faster lens called Novicar, which had an, uh, an aperture of f2.8, or I think that's half a stop faster than this. Um, so, you know, your, your lens may, uh, your, your Cantina may have a Novicar or a Novar lens. Um, either way, three element lenses. Although for a three element lens, it's pretty good. Um, these lenses are pretty sharp. Uh, they're, uh, uh, the, the distortion is not bad. It's, um, um, I mean, I'll put a link down below to my Flickr album where I've, uh, of, of, of images I've shot with this camera. So far, as of today, I've, I've put uh, five rolls of film through it, both uh, black and white and color. So take a look at those, and I think you'll be impressed with the, uh, with the quality of uh, um, the image quality you can get out of this, uh, this simple little camera. Um, you can see that the, let's see, so, well, I'll tell you what. This is the jack for um, a PC. I think that's the PC socket. Uh, if you were to put a, a mount of flash into this cold shoe, um, this is called a cold shoe because it does not have an electronic contact uh, to fire a flash. Uh, it's simply a, a cold shoe or an accessory shoe. You could mount a flash here. If you did, you'd have to take a cord from the flash and plug it into here, um, which would communicate to the flash when the shutter is released. That's what that does. Um, it's called a PC socket. Um, and what else we have here? Well, let's take a look, looking down from the top. You can see that the aperture range goes from 3.5 to 22. Shutter speed range goes from 300 to one second. All right. Um, and a quirk of this camera, which I personally am not crazy about, but it is what it is. You see this right here. Uh, you have to depress this in order to change the exposure setting. So if I turn the, the, this dial here by gripping this ridge, then you will notice that the, the shutter speed and aperture are mated together. Uh, the idea was that once you set a particular um, exposure um, value over here, for example, right now it's set at exposure value 13, then at exposure value 13 you have a range of options. Uh, 
ranging from uh, 1 15th of a second at f22 all the way over to um, 1 300th of a second and somewhere between 4 and 5 6. And you, you can select anywhere within that range by simply turning this. Now if I want to change the, um, let's, let's suppose that I'm not using my light meter and I just want to shoot at 125 and let's say f16. Well, I have to uncouple these two mechanisms, so I have to push this in. And as I push this in, now I can move to 125 and F16. And when I, when I release this again, you see it'll turn here. They'll both turn. They'll both be turning together. So here's one, 125 and F4, and that's going to give me a long range of usable. Um, exposure settings. Again, one quarter of a second f22, one eighth of a second f16, one fifteenth of a second f11, and so forth. Uh, they all give these the equivalent uh, exposure value, uh, but for different, you know, depends on um, uh, the, um, the settings that you desire. So let's talk about focusing on this camera. Uh, this is a zone focused or hyperfocal focusing camera. Um, it is set in, you, you notice that the, there are markings down here in meters. So this is infinity. I don't know how we can see this. It's marked 10, 5, 3, 2, 1.5, 1.2, 1 meter, 0.9 meter. Um, and I did a separate video on zone focusing and hyperfocal focusing for cameras of this nature. So please take a look at that. In order to, to properly focus this camera, you need to understand those concepts. Um, you see here there's a red dot right there. So the owner's manual refers to that red dot as the snapshot mode because at that red dot you've got the infinity symbol next to F8 and when and so essentially that red dot is the hyperfocal F8 setting. So everything now from uh, let's see what's that, about three meters to infinity is going to be in focus if you focus at that red dot. So that's, again, it, 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 the camera manufacturers of the period were trying to make the concept of exposure easily understandable for, to people who were not photographers and um, it, um, well, with mixed results, frankly. So let's see, so that is there. Um, we've got our focusing mechanism, nice and smooth. Uh, shutter speed, aperture, and I think that just about covers it. I think we have covered the most of the functions on the Zeiss Cantina. Um, I've been very happy with this camera. It's really rugged. It's extremely well built. There is, um, um, I think the only piece of plastic on the exterior of this camera is maybe this Bakelite here. Um, but this is just a solid little brick of a compact camera. Um, when I bought this, it, it needed work. I couldn't even get a test roll through it. I, I put a test roll film through it and um, the advanced mechanism just ripped it up. Uh, and so I had to take it over to uh, Yaakov on Allenby Street to have it repaired. And he took it apart, put it back together, cleaned it up, put it back together. Uh, charged me less than $100 and uh, now it works beautifully. So, um, and these cameras are worth investing in. Um, unlike the plastic um, point and shoots of the 1990s that are so popular nowadays because it's, you know, they feature automatic everything, automatic exposure, automatic focus, automatic film advance, and so forth. Uh, when those things break, they're done. Uh, whereas these um, metal body viewfinder cameras of the 50s and 60s are well built, well made, mostly metal, and they are worth investing in, they're worth fixing, and once you, once you fix it and, um, and, and overhaul it back to spec, um, you know, this thing will last for a very, very long time without the, without the need for additional maintenance. Um, and if you're a, a casual hobby shooter of film photography, uh, that's fine. Uh, that, that's, you, you, you will have a, a, a good, reliable camera that you can use for years and years without having, to, without having any work done to it. Um, I really think that these, these cameras are... Uh, um, I think they'll be around for a while. <laughs> um, those, the, the, the plastic point shoots are... well. Anyway, uh, n not worth investing in, in my opinion. But you know, you may differ. I just, I just don't think so. I'm, I'm, 
I prefer the stuff made in the 50s and 60s back when, um, when consumer products were made of metal and they were built to last. And uh, this one certainly is and certainly does. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and um, if you did, please do like and subscribe and check out the links down below. I'll link to the, um, the owner's manual and the, the images I've shot with this uh, camera as well. Um, all right, take care. Have a great day now. Bye-bye.